Today we'll be exploring one of my favorite streets in Tokyo, Chazawa Dori. Located in Tokyo's Setagaya district, this long street joins two of my favorite neighborhoods, Shimokajizawa and Sengenjaya. Lined with local shops, cozy cafes, and restaurants, Chazawa Dori is bustling with activity. We'll be grabbing snacks at a few different locations along the way, enjoying some coffee, and ending the night at a small vinyl bar serving up local craft beers. Just two stops away from Shibuya is Sengen Jaya Station. This stop is the portal to a bustling neighborhood that spreads out in all directions. It is loaded with character, packed with independent shops and bars, yet it's also a residential area. Now, just heads up, Sengen Jaya Station can be quite confusing, and that's because this area is actually in between of like a highway. So when you come up through the exits, you're on different sides. If you need an elevator, I would recommend the south side exit. They've got an accessibility elevator right here. And then if you cross the street that way, that's where we're going for today. If you don't require an elevator, then come up on the north side and you'll already be on the correct side. Now, let me just say, I have spent many a nights exploring the restaurants and bars in Sankanjaya, and I will do a Tokyo tours here one day. But for daytime activities on such a nice day, I'll be walking away from the bustling station and deeper into the residential neighborhood. Welcome to Chazawadori Street. That's right, I've taken you to a street for this week's Tokyo tours. Now, this isn't an especially like crazy popular tourist attraction street. It's just a street in a neighborhood that I, that I really like. It closes down on Sundays and there's no cars allowed. There's pedestrians and there are bikes, but it really makes it a lot easier for exploring. So I was like, I need the typhoons to stop so I can do a Tokyo tours on a Sunday and the day has finally come. Let's just explore. Now, something to note, I am filming this on a Sunday, specifically because I wanna be on Chazawa Dori while it's not allowed having access to like cars and trucks and stuff like that. But if you come during the week or when it's not closed down, you can actually use this bus. This is bus number 61 and it's right beside the station exit and you can take it all the way down to Shimokitazawa. It obviously doesn't run when the street is closed between these one and 5 p.m. on a Sunday, but any other day of the week, if you're feeling tuckered out or you wanna explore this area and halfway there, you're like, oh, I can't take it just hop on the bus. And it goes the other direction as well. So if you're coming from Shimo, hop on the bus, it's gonna take you down to Sengenjaya. One of the things that's nice about strolling around in a neighborhood, especially on a closed street, is that you get these little kind of like pop-up fairs. It might be for like local arts and craft or vegetables or something promoting the community. So, you know, you can always find something fun to do. But I'm on a mission right now. I can't stop and have this kind of fun because I'm planning for different kind of fun. And by fun, of course, I'm talking about food. One of my favorite kinds, dim sum. This local butcher shop serves wonderful, homemade, chubby and cheap parcels of magic. My first food stop is a slightly unusual one. Now, I found this place wandering around one evening and um, I thought it was just a normal meat store that serves you know, ground meat and sliced meat for shabu shabu, but I noticed on the corner there was something steaming. And when I checked closer, I realized that they had their own homemade shumai and it's for 70 yen a piece. 70 yen, when was the last time you spent around 70 cents on anything? Now, they sell out, sometimes they're not there, but they're made with like onions and pork. They're so juicy, they're so hot. The noodle's a little bit overcooked, but you know what? The noodle's not the star in this situation. It is the hefty chunks of incredible pork meatball magic in the center that's like melt in your mouth. My hand is burning as we speak, but I'm doing this for you guys. It's a sacrifice. Now I'm gonna burn my mouth for you guys. <laughs> Mm. 
พอมาพอพอพอพอืมพอืมพอ Hot damn, that's good. Oh my god. Now, what's interesting about this place is they're not actually on Google Maps. The Tonkatsu restaurant that's upstairs is, and I think that they are related in some way. But when you come here looking for the Tonkatsu restaurant, look below what you'll find the meat place. I really hope you guys get a chance because this is an excellent little street snack, which is kind of unusual for Japan. If you'll excuse me, I have burning to do. And what I like about this location is once you finish eating, there is a super convenient, Lawson's convenience store across the street with an outdoor garbage can. Unless you're attached to carrying around garbage all day, I suggest you take this chance to dump all your bottles and all the garbage you've been carrying in your bag because Japan does not just toss trash anywhere. And you don't really eat while you walk, so take advantage. Impossible. my tummy, I continue my stroll down Chazawadori. The street is nicely paved, easy for walking, rolling, or biking on. And while street food is not a big thing in Tokyo, Chazawadori actually offers many shops for ready-to-eat takeaway munchies. Like this shop, serving kushikatsu and kushiage, fried skewers of meat and vegetable, as well as different types of karage, fried chicken. Keep your eyes open for little statues hiding in the gardens. And if you visit Chazawadori, see if you can find the tiny tanuki statues. As a big fan of tanuki folklore, I was delighted to find this pair just chilling and people watching all day long. They've got the perfect view of the street. Oh, something else funny about this street. The whole time I was filming, they were blasting power ballads. It was like free street karaoke. But I seem to be the only person taken over by the power of music. Feel free to join me if you know this timeless classic. I can't live living is without you. I can't live. I can't live anymore. I'm taking you on a small detour off of Chazuadori into the residential side. Look for the street sign high up on the pole with hearts on it. This adorable sign says Ai Ai Rodo or Love Love Road. It has a ton of interesting neighborhood shops that are run by grannies and granddads, and honestly, it's very likely that they've been serving this neighborhood for decades. I'm stopping at a shop that specializes in tofu and Japanese side dishes and picking up a favorite, homemade ginger eggplant for later. But I couldn't resist the lure of the Jaga Imo Koroke, a sweet potato croquet for just a hundred yen. Most of these places are cash only, so if you haven't brought Japanese yen with you, the 7-Eleven convenience store chain are the only places that accept overseas bank cards, so you can take out some cash money. Some people might try to warm this up, but I don't think it should be warmed up because it's basically like a delicious sweet potato, mashed potato um, that's been like deep fried and it's not greasy in any way. The inside tastes like sweet, but not like overly sweet. I think if you warm it up, you would just get like molten lava mashed potato in your mouth. This is like a really nice, cool snack. Not like cool, as in like, it's totally fine cool. Mm. It almost has like um, the savory batter on the outside meets the sweet, like that salted caramel feeling. And it hits this sweet right in the back of the tongue at the end. It's really nice. My next stop is Kiyoshi, a shop where everything is homemade. In fact, I could see a little old lady cooking in the back. 
The food was so fresh and hot that the lids were popped open to keep the steam from getting the batter soggy. This box of vegetable tempura has lotus root, eggplant, sweet potato, mixed shredded veg, and a shishito pepper, all for 350 yen? What? The ebi furai, fried shrimp, was calling me. And six jumbo pieces for under four bucks was a great deal. It was so crunchy, not oily at all, perfectly seasoned, and the shrimp was sweet and mm. juicy. Such a skilled fry. Bit of a rare find. Hot ebi fry, so crispy. If you're wandering down Chazavadori, why not swing on by Love Love Road and support the local businesses? You are sure to find something delicious. Oh ho ho, what have we here? One of my favorite. The price down 100 yen vending machine. That is a dollar for a drink. Some vending machines will be like a dollar ten. Some will be a dollar twenty. Um, but finding yourself a one dollar bottle of cold water, that's the way to go. I heard that in the countryside you can even get bottles for like 80 cents, which is crazy. But one thing you're never going to have to worry about is finding a vending machine. But if you need help taking the ball out because you're holding your camera and you don't want to decide. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm trying to hold the camera back. Uh, yep, super smooth. First try. <laughs> All right. I don't need your attitude. Wheat wheat. Yuck! Cutting onions is such a pain. It always brings tears to your eyes. What a mess! Here, try this. Bring color to your life with the King Kogi Clothing Collection. All designs are lovingly made by me, Martina. And supporting the store helps me to continue to make videos like these. Thanks, King Kogi Clothing. I absolutely love it. But. Why are my eyes still watering? Oh, you see, when you cut an onion, it releases enzymes and sulfenic acid, which combines to produce an irritating gas called propanethanol S oxide. That gas irritates your eyes and causes them to tear up. Oh, science! KingKobe.ca. Bring color to your life and suffer in style. It's time for coffee. Obscura coffee roasters are located here in Sanganjaya and also in Hiroshima. They make a delicious hand drip coffee and their espresso is flavorful and smooth. I picked up two bags of whole bean coffee and rest assured they take their coffee seriously. They select raw beans from all over the world on a farm to farm basis and they purchase directly from the coffee farm, making it an ethically sourced coffee bean. The outdoor bench and standing tables make a great place for people watching while you rest those feet. As we continue our way down Chazawadori, the local vegetable grocer is just bustling with activity. Fruit and veg in Japan is seasonal, meaning you're not going to get strawberries, melons, or persimmon necessarily all year long. If you're visiting Japan, I seriously recommend trying whatever fruit is in season. The flavor will blow your mind. This Osaka-based takoyaki restaurant is always wildly popular as it sets up little camping chairs and tables outside of their shop. And if you want to pick up an array of food but you can't find a spot to eat, don't worry, I got you covered. Now if you make it far enough down Chazawadori, you're going to find this little tiny intersection of uh, kind of like greenery and little stone benches to sit on. And these are pure pedestrian pathways, so there's nobody going to need driving or biking on them. And you can kind of sit here and eat your food, so if you grab a bunch of things and you want to have a place to rest, keep heading down and you'll find it. Um, there's a snowboard out here, I don't know if it's going to be here forever, but I will be like, turn left at the snowboard.
Well, well, well. What have we got here? Crod gamut. I thought I could get through the street without finding too much crod, but this is like my third or fourth crod. And uh, for those of you in the comment section that are like, Martino, what is this crod thing you keep bringing up? That's what we all want to know. It's simply just a sticker that I noticed like eight years ago, and it's everywhere. Like many different prefectures, different parts, different cities, different subways. So I think it's some kind of uh, graffiti artist is what we've all come up with, but they keep changing their sticker and it's literally everywhere. We'll crack the code one day. Chipmunks invading the earth, that's the theory. Now, I want to take you to a favorite vintage shop that I never pass by without browsing. It has all types of items, from books to pottery, toys, and even records. Give it a browse. You're sure to find something unique. Look at this. Sexy countdown. I mean, like, this might be amazing. It's now after 5 p.m. and as you can see, there are cars and there are motorcycles and the road is back opened again. So that means you gotta stick to the sidewalk, but that does not mean that this street is over. Oh no, we are heading into a, a funky izakaya filled area. So continue with your exploring, just keep it on the sidewalk. The sun is setting beautifully, and you know, it just wouldn't be right if I didn't show you the gorilla building. Yep, no one seems to know why there's a giant King Kong-esque gorilla building here saving a schoolgirl, but when you live long enough in Japan, you just don't ask these questions anymore. You just accept. As the cafes, bakeries, and local grocery shops close for the day, their shutting marks the opening of the bars, izakayas, and restaurants. Most places open around 6 p.m., but some open earlier. For the final stop in this Tokyo Tours, we're heading to Daizawa Crossroad, which is the next main intersection. Once you hit the road, turn left, and in less than five minutes, you'll see an orange awning, and you've arrived at Small World. With room for five or six people, Small World is a record shop and a craft beer bar. It has a unique collection of indie and experimental vinyl for sale, and the owner curates the music for the evening. There were only five craft beers on tap at one time, all chosen by the owner from microbreweries around Japan. He rotates the selection, so there's always something new and interesting to try. I started with a pint of Hazy IPA, Oni Densetsu Nu Oni Uzu IPA, brewed in a microbrewery in Hokkaido. Citrusy and tropical with a balanced bitterness, this 8% beer was a little too easy to drink. The owner speaks Japanese and English, and he's kind and funny. He provides a modest food menu, including vegan items. I went for the edamame with salt and the Japanese-style pickles. With such a warm vibe, it's clear why this bar is a local favorite. I recommend swinging on by, browse the record collection, maybe have a pint, and if you do go, tell him King Kogi sent you. I hope you enjoyed this Tokyo Tours. Links to all the shops visited are in the YouTube info box. And if you like what I'm making, please consider supporting these adventures by becoming a member of the channel or give my store a browse and see if there's something you like. I'll see you next time and keep keeping it cool on the King Kogi airship.